reason I came forward in November of this last year was to protect others. And the retaliation that I feared became true. And it happened. And I didn't take that decision lightly in November to come forward because I knew how hard it would be. So in 2016, I was scared. I thought about just never talking about it, never reporting it. And instead, I spent the night after it happened crying about how could I go home to my five-year-old daughter and not try to change the world for her. So I did go to leadership, but I was still scared. I decided that a conversation was enough. Leadership told him, if this happens again, there will be serious consequences. This is the serious consequence. And he told me to dream about what I could do here. And that being an aide or an intern was just the beginning. And then he stepped closer, he put his face up to mine, and he asked for a kiss. I said no. I laughed it off. I left. And I thought that was the end of it, but it persisted. Then I started to think that this was just the way it was. In this building, in the real world, my first job. He started accidentally bumping into me, asking me if I could feel how he felt about me. He asked if my sexual orientation was because I just hadn't had the right man. So again, members, I read to you the summary of findings. And I remind you of how it made me feel and reminded me of how I felt when I was harassed in this very building. Come on, just make me happy. Don't you want to make me happy? Don't you need an F buddy? I need an F buddy. Would you F me? Your breasts look great in that dress. I've heard that one in this building. I've dealt with sexual harassment, sexual assault from the time I was a child until the time I was serving in this building. I have never named a single person who has done me wrong. I struggle with that alone so hard. And when I decided to come forward and say that it was a colleague who most recently harassed me, I got thrown in one side and down the other from people asking, why don't I name him? And it's sick to say, because what he did wasn't as bad as some other people did to me that I've never named. When I was sexually assaulted, the assault was one thing when I replied, when I turned, um, told the police, they said, which way were you walking? And I said, that way. And the two policemen looked at each other and said, next time, walk that way. That's when the sexual sort of harassment came in, was after the assault. They weren't going to do anything. They just said, next time you take a walk with your dog at 10 in the morning, walk that way. Maybe you'll have less of a chance, or a better chance, or whatever your chances are. Um, so. I didn't comment on the Me Too. There's too much to say. There's, there's too many times. There's too many things I've observed. The second week in this chamber, I turned somebody in. I said, is this, is this what we're going to deal with? And I was told by a woman, yeah, get with the program. Stand up. Take care of yourself. In all my press conferences I've done, I bring Representative Garnett with me because he was there. Believed me. He saw what happened. He stood with me, and I called him my safety blanket when I went to that press conference. Those men shouldn't fear for their life, for believing me. 
those men should not fear for their life and put on a bulletproof vest every morning for standing with me. We're talking about a workplace. We are talking about a workplace that has turned so hostile that for people to be decent and stand with me, they fear for their life. Today, we are going to change that environment. I want to ask the women and the men who are in this chamber and in the gallery who have ever been the subject of workplace sexual harassment or been the friend who was the, the shoulder to a friend who was the subject of workplace sexual harassment to please stand up. <laughs> 